You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's After Show. Oh, man. Reaching out. Fighting me. Fighting you. Oh yeah, you know what that song means, people. Welcome to the Strain After Show, season Woo! one, episode one here on AfterBuzz TV. It is the Strain. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> and we're talking about episode one, night zero. I'm Matt Lieberman. Joining me all season long, fantastic panel. Stephen Lemieux here. Oh, I'm so glad I'm on this show. Yes, yeah, so Jackie excited. Borowski's here. Hi, my eyes drooling. Oh, just here, here, cover them up. Yeah. Cover them and, up. And Zach Wilson's here. Hey, hey, guys. And the fabulous Marissa Serafini on the ones and twos. Thank What's you, Marissa. Up? Yeah, I'm um, so excited to get all this this crew of people together. I love all the people in this room. Uh, you know, the majority of our Helix panel, the entirety of our Sleepy Hollow Woo! panel, all in the room to talk about this awesome reimagining of the vampire mythos. Now, I've been waiting for this show for a long time, uh, ever since it was announced. I remember when the novels first came out. And, and just, just to let everyone know, we're not talking about the books here. We, uh, Jackie knows a little bit about them, right? Um, as per usual for After Buzz Custom, I am the only person who has read the book. <laughs> right. But we're, we're not in the business of giving out spoilers. We're just, we're only going to talk about the book in reference of giving out more information or if there's a difference, perhaps? I will say this, though. He intended to do a series first. Okay. And so no one wanted to buy the series. So, so he, he wrote, wrote books instead. Books, and then the books were a huge hit, and then people were like, we want to buy a series. And mm -hmm. so that's how this It kind of awesome. feels like the vampire show that nobody has, like, messed with to make cater to a wider audience. Like, you know, tr you have True Blood, you have, like, all these other shows where they just like to pack on the makeup and the sparkles and all this stuff. This is just the skin peeled away, literally, to a bloody, gory mess of amazing writing yeah. and awesomeness. Well, I was thinking of this, how, to me, vampire fiction usually falls in the realm of fantasy, and this is true sci-fi. Yeah. yeah. It's very, very grounded, and it's kind of in the way that Man of Steel, if, if you'll let me go here, kind of reframed... Don't ever um, use the term well, Man of Steel. Well, ever. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't but know that I want to let you. But it was, it was about what would happen realistically in the real world if an alien came to Earth with those powers and how would we react? Now, whether or not we ultimately like the movie, you have to credit its approach yeah. for being okay. very, very different. And I feel like this show is kind of taking that with, this, with the vampire mythos and dropping it into our real world. Yeah. I feel like it's basically mixing Helix with like Fringe and awesome gory yeah. stories. Yeah, well it's like CDC versus vampires. Yeah, it's like, great. <laughs> right now it's more like, you know, CDC, virus, something nefarious is happening, but it, we're probably gonna build to CDC chopping off heads and burning people. Just let's avoid oh the sleep God. with me, Dr. Ephraim. Yeah. <laughs> That's a shout out to our Helix fans. <laughs> to our Helix fans. I None can't say that. though that this, this show, like, as far as the women are concerned, it does seem like the intro sort of is a little bit sleep with me, Dr. Ephraim. Well, little no, bit. it's more like, <laughs> more like you already slept with me, Dr. Ephraim. Yeah. yeah. But it actually, it actually has a good purpose. And I love that they started with a voiceover and then it came into the end. And looking at everything they've built on Dr. Ephraim's character this episode, mm -hmm. I mean, because it's an hour and 40 minutes long, it, it really does come f full circle with his struggle with love. And the fact that he loves his son so much, which is honestly foreshadowing of terrible things are probably going right. yeah. to happen. Well, to here, his let's son. not let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay. Let, let's start from the beginning. Now, the interesting thing for me with this show and this pilot is it feels very different for FX because while we do get while we do get some character stuff, it is a very plot driven show. It's, yes, it just looks different than not just FX show than I think most things on television. It yeah. has this really cinematic feel. Well, yes. Guillermo del Toro yeah. uh, helmed the pilot, and we're all really excited about that because we all love Guillermo here. Um, he's a visionary filmmaker. Let's talk about the the opening of the show. So, of course, we do get this uh, Abraham Satrakian. 
uh, monologue as we get into the plane, and we set up a few of our characters that we're probably going to be revisiting over the course of the series, are infected, um, the four survivors, and then the people who come back. Um, and I, I love this idea of hunger and hunger and thirst. Hunger is the first thing that we that we learn as we were developing, you know, but that hunger can be satiated, but love is a thirst that can never be quenched and that ultimately cannot be trusted. We cannot trust ourselves when we love too much or love too readily. And as we saw in the final moments where we have uh, the, the French man and his young daughter returns to him with no explanation, he's just gonna accept it because he's so grateful that she's alive, quote unquote. You know, and we're gonna have to face a lot of hard choices and I think you're you're very right in saying something bad is probably going to happen to poor <laughs> young Zach. We're going to have to face a lot of hard choices um, in this real world because what would happen if your your relative died, your mother became a vampire? Would you chop her head off and burn her, or would you try to l cope and live with her as best you could? The only thing I can think of watching this episode is it reminded me of the pile of The Walking Dead, where mm -hmm. it's like. And the first season of The Walking Dead was great, but I, I see the pilot of The Walking Dead as great television, it's entertaining, and one of the very first scenes is Rick shooting a little girl in the head. It's provocative, and it kind of just pulls you in like, oh my god, they went there. And with this episode, I can say, oh my god, they went there. And this is just the first episode. So they're not even trying to like really build it up for like this huge, like, oh, it's going to be gory this episode. It's like, this is the world that they're in, and... Mm -hmm. Stuff's getting bad already, and it's just gonna get worse. Yeah, and they, I mean, they've set it up where, I mean, part of it, it, part of it it's the advantage you have having Guillermo del Toro mm -hmm. with that name. Like, you, you're gonna get less... F fight. More leeway. Yeah, more leeway to go the place you wanna go. More, you can smash ahead if you want to. You can destroy a little girl's life yeah. and take away... That head like, smashing was dope. Oh, oh my god, it was so cool. It no was so Game of Thrones fight from the end of the last season. Uh, was, uh, well, it was, the spoilers, perhaps, for was, people who don't watch Game of Thrones. Also, it was also filmed before that aired. Before that aired, just so you know. Yeah. But in any case, here, we only have an <laughs> hour, and we got a lot of stuff to cover. But um, I will say, though, because you guys are saying that, oh my gosh, they go there, it's shocking. I mean, but it, I, think, I think that... For the scenario, these are things that you think of. I had a friend um, talk about Walking Dead, and she's like, "Walking Dead gets you in a in in a in an end of world scenario where you start in your daily life thinking, well, what if I was in a zombie apocalypse? Mm -hmm. Because in this in this kind of show, it set it up in such a realistic way that you think." well, what if I was in a situation in which vampires were like a virus contagion? Then like these things really would happen. It's not like they're, I don't feel like they're doing things just to be provocative. Right. I feel like they're doing things to be like, this is the brutal reality of what would happen. Not like, and not just vampirism, like it, when if you had a giant contagion, like yeah. people of all ages would and die. And that things are only going to get worse. Like, hey man, if you think that this is shocking, you better saddle up because this is just the beginning. Yeah. So um, I, I want to get, we have to get Please. into uh, this opening. So uh, we're meeting some of these characters and, uh, you know, this uh, flight attendant, she gets to the back of the plane and this dude is freaking out. He's like, there's something down there. There's something down there. And of course we know there's something down there. But she's <laughs> like, oh, come on. So she opens up the hat and she doesn't see anything she's like whatever dude you're crazy and then all of a sudden the thumping and we're like oh crap and it suddenly it it's popping through all the rivets on the hatch are popping off and then all of a sudden just this mass of flesh appears and then smash cut and we're like what was that what was that five minutes in we've already seen it and we've we're already like, seen and come on can we just admit He's Dracula. That's Dracula. It's Dracula. It's very, yes. It's goddamn Dracula. If they go with, um, and I think they are, if they go with the mythos that they use in the book, I mean, they haven't, in the book they set up the mythos first, and then, you know, they have the, they have the plane. But um, if they go with the mythos they have in the book, I think they're going to be heavy Dracula comparisons. I mean. Yeah, well, I mean, it, 
you have a, a an aging vampire hunter who's similar to a Van Helsing type. You have a massive nine foot coffin that is shipped from one place to another. The comparisons are very very easy to make, and I think that they're made uh, they're made obvious. They're made clearly that way on purpose. Well, having to cross the river, having right. to be there by sunbreak, like exactly. Yeah. It, I mean, it'll be really interesting to see because uh, we got we see like the 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 Dracula, the crazy clouded figure and stuff, like how much intelligence do they give to this like biological i think it's going to be a, like a clear force but we didn't really get any communication right just pure instinct we what don't we know, saw in this episode right we don't know what kind of what level of sentience this creature has mm -hmm. and I, i'm sure we're going to learn it over the course of the next few episodes um so then we we drop right into uh ephraim goodweather's life we meet him really quickly uh he's in a rush he's trying to repair his marriage uh, he's been late to e all, four out of six of these mandatory court session appointed court appointed sessions with a counselor. His only opportunity to uh, regain custody or or continue having custody of his son Zach, who he loves dearly, um, and you know he loves his wife. Like the the fact of the matter is, he is never going to be present enough for this marriage to function the way that his wife needs it to function, and it's it's just. It's really, really tragic when a marriage, th there's tons of love there, but it ultimately isn't going to work out. And uh, that's what's going on here. And she's met someone else. This guy, Matt, who drives who works, a green Prius. Drives a green Prius works and works at Sears. Sears. And he just can't stand that. I, I mean, I, I think anybody who has, like, you know, who's worked all their lives on their career and career is very important to them, to be cuckolded by a guy who works at Sears has got to be really, really frustrating. It's like the pool boy. Yeah. It's kind I, of the same. And he's kind of a dick, too, because he says he's going to watch out for his car and then totally doesn't. Because he knows who it is, Yeah, you know? but he's, he's a butthole. I will say, though, um, as far as the women on this series, yeah. you only really have two, and mm -hmm. then it's like... You set up the wife in a very uncool position because even though you have him saying, "Oh, you've made me out in the in the therapy session. Oh, you've mm -hmm. made me out to be the villain narrative." We as audience members automatically are going to side with F. See, I didn't. I I empathized with her completely because he was taking over the session. He he rushed in late like a tornado and then wasn't listening to her, wasn't being cooperative. He was just making excuses and saying, this is how it is. Yeah, I, I thought it was really well balanced in terms of like how, because we want, I want the best for him because he, he's clearly a lead character. We like him so far. Yeah. He seems like a good dude. And he lists, oh, that moment where he lists off, it's like, you want somebody that, that's check. gonna love Zach. Check. You want somebody that's gonna love you. Check. And it's just like you can feel the like the negotiation, like that part of the of letting someone go. That he's he's at ne the negotiation. You phase. can also he, feel it that it hurts. it's he's making it. He's taking it too realistic as opposed to on an emotional level. He's making yeah. it all business as opposed to yeah. the reasons why he loves her and the things like that. He's a scientist. But well, it's also it's also kind of scary to think that too because if you look at the character progression of his wife where we have a character who's after somebody he loves and she says he she loves him but she doesn't want him it just it, it to me it screams she's going to be beco become a trap for him later in the season hmm. what do you think Jackie um i think um, future predictions aside because i've read the books yeah. but um I, I i just get and this is a problem in the books too is she's not a very well fleshed out character mm -hmm. and you feel like if he feels all these feelings for her and he has all this love for her um, and uh, the other character, Nora, is more fleshed out. You just are set up to a position where you're like, well, obviously I'm going to find him more interesting and side with his opinions, but I hate automatically doing that because she's kind of set up to be the jerk in this situation. You're like, well, he has all the, he's so busy and he has yeah. all these things going for him. Why doesn't she love him? Because we have given her nothing. Well, I, I'd like to think that Carlton Cuse, uh, who obviously was an exec executive producer on Lost and is the executive producer of Bates Motel, uh, will give these female characters more depth than they were given in the books. Uh, I mean, based on the quality of those two series alone, 
I have I have a lot of faith that they will be able to uh, add some much needed depth to these characters. Mm -hmm. But in any case, uh, F's phone just keeps going off and off and off and off and off. And finally, he has to accept the fact that he has to take this call. And it's this plane that's in this weird dead zone, and all the windows are shut except one. Super creepy. And um, you know he gets this call uh, from Nora, uh, who is his. Uh, you know, co-chair or co his partner in crime partner, yeah. over there at the CDC, and uh, everybody's having a dick measuring contest, and she's going to show hers, and it's going to be the biggest <laughs> of all, and they are going to be the first ones on that plane. Um, we also quickly learn that you know, while uh, while F's wife has moved on, you know, and had a developed a relationship with someone else that F and Nora either did sleep together or have been sleeping together and he hasn't told he hasn't told her. I got the sense F they've been Nora. sleeping together for a little while. Yeah. Um, you know, so I like complicating complicating this relationship very early on because uh, not only is it going to increase the personal stakes between the two of them but the fact is he's still hung up on his wife but he's messing around with his partner there's a lot of high tense emotions now now granted Nora I think she's got it kind of on lock like she's business first we'll deal with that later but it's still, I, I like this dynamic between the two. We also them. we also learn about a lo little thing about F is that he drinks carton milk a lot. Yes, he does. Yeah, so that's like his thing. When he arrives on a scene, he drinks fresh, cold <laughs> milk, which is weird. I'm on the scene at the elementary cafeteria. Well, he, we know that he was an alcoholic from the um, uh -huh. from the therapy session. So I I have a feeling that he's drinking. They're you're, they're using it as a comparison, where like he used to do this terrible thing to his body. Now he's trying to do the best thing to his body he can. And we also learn that he's he's very intelligent with his job and he's very obsessed with it. When the guy's like, how many times do you touch your mouth and touch your face in a day? Yeah. Okay, well you touch it three times every five seconds and then you do this, 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 three and this. Three times, or, or once every three minutes. Yeah, and then uh, that's how the virus is spread. They don't care. He's smart. Mm -hmm. They don't care about time. They don't care about any political, they don't care whose dick is bigger. They will just wipe everything they out. Care. Was that a line? They don't care whose dick <laughs> no, is bigger. No, they don't. Viruses don't, don't care. care. But Viruses they, don't care about your big dick. They do care. They care about <laughs> Zach Wilson's huge dick. Yeah. Can, <laughs> can Hashtag can Zach Wilson's that, huge dick. Yeah. Can we say, though, before everybody got sure. on the scene... <laughs> We're no before, longer talking before, about yeah. that. Before everybody got on the scene, the way they handled this plane this uh, plane shutdown, to me, was almost too efficient mm -hmm. for what you know the situation. It would have been a huge cluster. It would have been a yeah. huge cluster F. Yeah. Because, I I mean, the first guy on the scene is basically like, oh, this is a bad, this is bad news. Most people, when they see a broken down plane, they're like, we should try and call the people on the inside. We yeah. should probably open the doors we and say hello. We should get inside and see what's up. Yeah. And I'm just impressed with how, um, how, much better that they are about handling the situations I, than we are in real life. Well, granted, you know, like some people may read that as like, oh, that's too convenient. But honestly, we we got a lot of plot to cover, so I don't care that much. And I'm more I'm more on your side of like, oh, good, we have smart people on the scene. I think it was also that they were trying to approach it from like yeah. a, a like let's be cautious because the plane is cold mm -hmm. despite having just landed, which and is no way it would really strange. Yeah. Yeah, oh, just one more thing about the milk. For whatever reason, <laughs> to me, it just feels like Guillermo and and Chuck Hogan just opened a big book of specifics and were like, that one, that's a weird specific. <laughs> Maybe that Chuck Hogan character. is an avid milk drinker. Maybe he is. As there a lactose go. intolerant man, I, it, it rings false to <laughs> me. So do you guys think there was significance in the one open window? Do you think that was a signal to people to know that that was the plane that had the thing on it? Do you think... I feel like they would know... Which yeah. plane? I, I don't feel know. like it. Well, see, the open window is weird because it's like, why? I don't even think it was open in the book. Because why would you leave just one window open when you want people to come inside to get the get the vampire disease? Unless you're it, that. Unless the 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 master Dracula, whoever he is, is looking out. That's kind of what I was thinking. Was either it was it was Dracula looking out or. You know, one or more of the little parasitic worms, if they have concept of sight or any kind of sense, you know, if they're up against that they're glass like, beep, beep, to beep, see what's up, beep, beep, you know? 
Um, also, just window. having it open, you can see the flurry of activity. You can see the lights approach. It's it's a signal to like get back undercover, get back in the coffin. You know, I, I think it, it was a smart tactic. And we Dracula's see part. later that at least he, he it can temporarily disappear. So it could have been standing there while we're looking at the window. It's true. Um, so why do you think the plane it. was cold then? Well. I don't have a good answer for you. I mean, the same way that, that F doesn't have a good answer for the people when they're all asking for answers, there's really no, there's no good explanation. I, I, I have to think that not only does, you know, Dracula suck up any blood and warmth from people, um, you know, maybe... Due to the air around it, if it's... I mean, that's... I, I feel like... There's like I, a I don't chemical know what reaction of some kind. story it would be, or like mythos it would come from, but mm. maybe, and maybe I'm confusing it with ghosts, but like the idea of a, a supernatural being stealing the, the heat out of the air around it. Yeah, yeah we would, associate death yeah. with cold. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that could easily be something tied into, through science, like to the amount of heat that maybe is required Required right. of a being like and, that. And um, then we get eye cursed with the cold room. Yeah, well, yeah, later like at Stoneheart, Palmer keeps his room 20 degrees uh, below normal, below the rest of the building. Um, and he, you know, he says to I cursed, well, that, you know, not that it matters to you because you're a vampire. I actually uh, have a prediction on that one. Well, we'll, we'll, get, to, yeah. we'll get to Stoneheart in a minute. Um, so, in any case, uh, F and Nora get onto the plane first. They're examining everything, and we're on the edge of our seats because we're like, oh, snap, what's going to happen? Are they going to get worms up in their suits? What's, gonna, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, we have survivors. People are just suddenly alive. Crap. Okay. Um, also, we, we learn through the use of UV lights, uh, which, first of all, the survivors do not like in their faces. No. Um, not at all because UV is, uh, is anti-vampire. That either something was spread across the entire plane or everyone or it was a virgin america atlantic flight <laughs> so <laughs> well we've got what was here's here's what's up right we've got ammonia and we've got ammonia in the air uh and we don't know where it came from and we've got these these weird stains review reviewed through uv now part of me thinks there was a know, rock star on the flight though so well, just give me a second <laughs> You know, he's or, so funny. He's a great, he's, he's, he's a great a brilliant character to have. Comedian. Sorry. So, uh, part of me s says as I'm watching, I'm like, oh, well, someone somehow cleaned up. There was tons of blood and somehow got cleaned up. That's got to be it, right? You know, like uh, ammonia would be used to clean up all this blood, and blood would still be reviewed uh, through UV. But that doesn't really track because when Dracula bites people, he absorbs everything and replaces it with that white opalescent stuff immediately so we still don't quite know what that is it's some kind of plasma or could energy. it be just blood minus all the hemoglobin yeah that's what that's the color looking yeah. like yeah, yeah. Hmm. he just I like that you lose the hemoglobin you lose the red from blood so it could just be what's left and you that's get what I think. like whiz i guess it's like white ziz no it's like <laughs> it looked yeah. Stop assuming that everyone's watched our Helix show. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but no, I mean, it was interesting to see, like, because that's what I assume, too, like, the hemoglobin's gone. But also, uh, just because we're talking about this scene, and everyone who's listening to this podcast has seen the entire episode, I'm yep. hoping at this point. No, um, you have to have seen the entire episode. Stop, watch yes. the episode, then listen. We, we've, seen, we've seen Dracula take the coffin, how fast it is, and we've seen him actually absorb somebody in person in this episode. So, at this point... Do you assume that, I mean, he has to have tons of those tendrils. Mm -hmm. Like, to be able to go through the plane that fast and absorb everyone at the same time. Well, you saw them all coming out of the heart. Uh, the heart, the vampire heart that um So he's got to have, has. the body has got to be just hundreds so of those freaking of those. tendrils. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if that's just what... Because it looks like kind of like a cloak that's like hiding everything. If it's just like under there, it's just like a mass of tentacles. I mean... I don't know, this is really nerdy, but Halo, they have the hunters, mm -hmm. and the hunters are literally just thousands of worm yeah. things together as one right. sentient being. Well, that's what I'm saying, that's what I've been thinking and that I kind of wanted to talk about is we don't know if the individual vampires uh, have personalities or if they have autonomy, or is it a hive mind kind of like 
an Ender's Game bugger situation what where, uh, you yeah. know, the more of these worms are in one place or in one body, the more strength it has and the more power it has over its fellow drones. Well, it that has to be. That is what I would assume. Like it it's can, got a queen, it's like a queen and drone situation like ants. It has to be something like that because if it can beat a heart, it needs mm -hmm. you need sentience to do that. You need yeah. a group mental capacity to do that. And I think just observing their behavior in the morgue, it's like it's like they all knew to converge at the same time. You didn't, aside from the four survivors, you didn't have like one person waking up here, one person waking up here. Mm -hmm. Like it, it was just simultaneous. Seemed, yeah, it seemed very simultaneous. And it's again, it's the pattern of a virus. A virus doesn't reason. It doesn't think. It swarms on the nearest available host and takes it over. So it was definitely, it was very viral behavior. And there's, you got to notice also there's a difference between the survivors and the people who are in the morgue mm -hmm. in that the worms had created an entirely new organ. Mm -hmm. Like the heart was like a new species organ as opposed to, um, what's, what's his name, the, the old Jewish guy? Satrakian. Satrakian, as opposed to the, the heart he had in his jar, which was a normal heart. So that must have been like a survivor. It didn't look normal to me. So I'm pretty sure it's a vampire heart because it had all the little. Yeah. Yeah, I think it well, was it just a little bit more it. decayed. I think it still had those extra like oh, pustule did, yeah. balls. Okay. Well, we're, we're let's we're gonna get into Abraham, Abraham Satrakian, who I think is maybe everyone's favorite character. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. In just a moment. The first thing I want to talk about first, though, is, is iTunes. iTunes. Don't you dare skip ahead, and I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> guess what, peeps? We here at AfterBuzz TV, we put out between 60 and 70 hours of free content a week. It's a crazy, staggering amount of free content, and you can download it or stream it or do whatever you want with it. You can watch it on your computer, on your phone, on your pad, whatever kind of device you have that has internet-based capabilities and the potential to listen to audio or view the the video isn't that cool what could you do to support us i'll tell you it doesn't cost a dime it only takes a second go to itunes rate and review this show and any other shows that you watch or that you listen to from our network i'll tell you why we need sponsors. Sponsors are our lifeblood here at AfterBuzz TV. It's how we're able to keep our shows free. It's how we're able to put out as many shows as we do. They keep the lights on and the doors open, and they know that they're making a good investment when they see shows with lots of positive ratings. So go to The Strain After Show on iTunes, give us a five-star rating, let us know how you feel about the show, give us some feedback so that we're giving you the best possible Strain podcast, and then go to the other podcasts and do the same. It's really easy, it just takes a second, and it helps us out so, so much. Feed our egos so we don't have to feed we on you. We read the comments, too. Yes. And I And Jackie I often responds to them. Respond she to does. them. Yes. Uh, also, tweet at us and, and hit us up on the YouTube link as well. We, we definitely we see all the comments. We try to respond to as many as we can. Um, for me, personally, tweets are easiest for me to respond to. Yeah. But uh, these, iTunes, these iTunes reviews really are important. Please, the only thing we hunger for more than love. His reviews. His reviews. <laughs> his reviews. Okay. And dead. All right. So uh, let's talk about let's talk about Abraham. We come into his pawn shop, um, and I was so happy to see Francis Capra from yes. Veronica Mars pop up. <laughs> I was like, Weevil and fin Finch are gonna filch. Filch, Filch, or Walder it's so Frey, late. or I'm messing up Harry Potter. Yeah, or Solomon, and or whatever Filch character are gonna beat each other. Yeah. yeah, but in any case, they try to pawn off. Uh, this watch on Abraham and he's like he's not having it this is not real silver and then uh, he starts trying to steal his money and he grabs him he's got his pressure point he's got a blade to it and he's like I can control your whole body from this pressure point and I will bleed you out you son of a bitch I Damn. also I also appreciated oh, so that badass. speech because a lot of times in action scenes for people like me that you're just like he's just grabbing his hand mm -hmm. at least in this situation he was like I can murder you from here and I'm like this makes sense <laughs> You are scary, you and you've go. told me why you're scary. Yeah, I bought it completely. He's a force to be reckoned with. It was so awesome. I'm calling it the redemption of David Bradley because mm -hmm. after certain events of from <laughs> Game of Previous Thrones, shows. like it's like how you're Multiple like Multiple shows. shows. Multiple yeah. shows. He's usually the bad guy and yeah. finally yeah. he's Solomon the good guy. on Doctor Who I as feel well. Like he's like so I'll do the show but can, can I be a good guy? Can I be like, good? One time. Just one time. <laughs> well, we don't know if he's a good guy yet, honestly though, cuz he might have his own motives and it's it true. looks like the the clasp is broken on this. He must have been taking it off pretty quick, huh? That huh? was what he said about the watch. 
Oh, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I honestly, I feel that he's good just because he he wouldn't go through all the trouble of stopping the contagion mm-hmm. if he wasn't good. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's just a personal vendetta against Dracula. I think he obviously wants to save lives. I'm just very curious about the life that he's led. Because, uh, let's face it, later on we see um, that he has a, a Holocaust tattoo from a concentration camp. Uh, he's an Armenian Jew. He's lived a long time. And part of me thinks that because he was in a concentration camp and he hates vampires and I love like secret history of the world stuff that the the Nazis were totally secretly run by vampires because Ooh. because Dracula comes from Berlin yeah that's very true he comes from Berlin on a plane from Berlin and he knows immediately that if it's coming from Berlin and it's a weird plane where messed up stuff is happening it's begun again. Oh snap! Time to get my sword cane. <laughs> Go just kick some butt. Er kommt aus Berlin. Yeah. I mean, he's basically like a, uh, an elderly steampunk Van Helsing. That's yeah. What I was Amazing. To. You know what I really like though? I because they they because it is Dracula and they're going with a lot of that myth- mythos. I loved that his secret wall. The first shot we get on that secret wall is a mirror. Just to show you that you can see him in the mirror, like that's just mm-hmm. a, like a little added bonus that they did for that shot. Yeah, and it's it's smart on his part, and you know that he's a good tactician. You know, the only way that you're going to get through to his secret room is if he can prove that you are in fact uh, a human. Well, are they going with the you have to be invited in or no? We don't know that yet. Okay. We don't know that yet. I mean, granted, here's what I think about crossing the river and the coffin, and tell me if I'm wrong. Here, or from way off base. Well, he's being brought in by somebody who is from the state. Right, that's the thing, is someone who already lives on the island is bringing him with him, effectively giving him An permission invitation. to... Yeah, effectively giving hmm. him permission to be there. Because otherwise, anyone else could have driven the van. Right. Someone who lives there brought him there, either... A human. A human, lives- negating the need to invite or to give permission because uh, he did not travel there by his own volition. It was someone who lives there who brought him in himself. It's interesting because we, t- we talked a little bit before about how a lot of this, uh, the vampireness of what we're dealing with here has been rooted in science in science and science yeah. fiction and stuff. It would, I'm very curious to see how they would scientifically explain that one. Hmm. Because that's such a mystical, otherworldly, like it's just an... an an unseen But why force. would they need him across the river before morning, though? That's the thing. Sunlight? I mean, I just I just assumed it was based but on... But the sunlight I, well, wouldn't have been across the river. I mean, well, there are other UV things rays. that here that you have to kind of, like, take on faith, because the fact, like, there's... When you think about, like, contagions and viruses, it, you can't have one that completely lives forever. Mm-hmm. Well, here's here's what I'll say about that. Let's wait and see what happens when they start doing tests of how these worms react to water. You know, it may be entirely possible that, you know, that Dracula just cannot pass a body of water by his own volition. That might be it, too. Maybe he just can't swim. And because it's the day, they have to have him in the co- he has to travel in the coffin. Because of UV rays. And mm-hmm. I also want to say, um, what do you guys think of them using for the, for the character development, not the character development, um, character design using Grim, the Grim Reaper as such a I think it's huge I base. It. I think it's so love awesome it. looking. And seeing the spine through the back, you can tell it's not a cloak. It's actually yeah. part of it. Yeah. yeah. I thought it's great. And it's one of those things that I love. And talking about like secret history of the world, like where do you think the Grim Reaper Origin looks like? like that's, this is the origin of, of our, that image. Of how we see the Grim Reaper. Why we paint that image when yeah. we think of it. It's to protect ourselves from this thing. To know that when we see this thing, you run. You I, know? You know, just hearing you guys say that, like talk about like how it's like the master and everything, I feel like the end of the season be something like they kill that master and they're planning on having the, the other ones in front of him die. And he's like, that wasn't my master though. And that's the end of the season. You're like, what? I don't even oh, know if we get to the end master. of the season before well, that. I think you know, that's going to happen soon. You kill, you kill the master, all the followers die with it. That's like one of the big mythos. So mm. I feel like the well, big twist will be there's more than one master. That well, would lend itself about, to the hive. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk about uh, the people who are supporting him that have brought him to the States. Stoneheart, this mysterious company, this mysterious corporation. That Samwise Gamgee is affiliated with. <laughs> Darn yeah. you, Samwise Gamgee. I know. Sean asked it. So glad to see him back. And I was like, oh, man, he's like kind of wasted in this part. He's just kind of like the nice helper guy. And then to get that reveal later on that he double-crossed them and that he's 
under the thumb of Stoneheart is awesome, and I love and that. And that's actually another point why they hired the Mexican guy. Because they've, yeah. they've probably used him to get drugs in before. And that's probably what he thought it was. Like, oh, it's just drugs. Yeah, he wouldn't second guess it. Right. As he says, when he sees the cop, he's like, white people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it, another weird errand for these white people. Am I the only one who thought weird casting on this? What? Sean Astin? Oh, for, was Sean Astin? Oh, for Sean oh, Astin? Yeah. I think, uh, I think it's going to reveal itself as to why over the course of the season. I mean, Jackie, you've read the book, so is the character, is it on point, do you think? Um, I didn't, uh, that's not how I imagine the character, but I, I can see where they're going with it. Okay. Like, I, I can see why, why they chose him, and I think for, for, um, for Sean Astin, this is a good role for him to yeah. be different, like, because he's essentially the, un, like, an undercover bad guy now that we see him, that he's working for the Stoneheart group. So, yeah. And I you're only saying that because that is all, that is what we know from the pilot. Right. Just, well, before anyone, just before anyone starts thinking that because Jackie's read the books that she's trying. I'm using trying... only information from yeah. the pilot. So for, for right. you to see, for you to see him in the first place, you, I mean, most of us know him from Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. So you're like, oh, he's pretty trust. Like, we have these ideas we about these We immediately trust him. So yeah, to have him trust be a traitor him. is great. Yeah, have now, him be a traitor at the end it, of the episode. It, it's great for him. Here. It might almost be on like, you can see it with a lot of the characters, some of the acting, they haven't fully been in the, into their character yet mm -hmm. because it's the pilot, because yeah. it's that. So well, we're going to see them grow into them over time. I yeah. want to talk we about the Stoneheart and what I, we see yeah, there. I will say, okay. though, when he's, when he's negotiating, like uh, he's asking them what they see or whatever, he's like, see anything yet? How about yet? I wanted to be like, stop bugging them. They're trying to figure out what's going on the plane, and you're asking them every two seconds what's it's going true. on. And then you figure out mm -hmm. he's doing that because he's part of the Stoneheart thing. It's true. So Stoneheart, so we don't know what this corporation is about, but we meet uh, we meet a few characters. We meet uh, uh, Icor Ike Icorst, yeah, uh, who is a vampire. Um, he is creepy. Uh, he and Mr. Palmer, who appears to be in charge, older man, on dialysis, potentially dying, or at least not in great shape. Potentially staving off the strain with coldness. Well, but that's the thing, right? He's, he doesn't appear, he's not a vampire. He, the way that he talks to Eichhorst makes me think that Palmer is still a human. I'm pretty sure if you're like on dialysis and all that, you're, he's like hooked up to machines. No, machine. I know, but yeah. what I'm saying is he's, he might be staving off being able to be infected or something by the cold. Slowing down the oh, parasite. Oh, slowing down, yeah. yeah. And his, I, I, his human illness. I love the line about like, I never get used to your breath. It's like, yeah. I miss it sometimes. But mm -hmm. that was great. I also thought, uh, you know, loyalty or gratitude is an effective leash. Was just such a creepy line. It gave mm -hmm. me like gave me the willies. Mr. Fitzwilliam, who uh, is very loyal to uh, to Mr. Palmer. Mr. Palmer helped him and his brothers out when he was young. Uh, and he's very much okay with what's about to happen to the human race. But what I really love... Because he's that loyal. Mm -hmm. What I love... I curse the guy who blinked sideways, yeah. right? Yes. What I really love about this character is how much information he gives us about the people who are thralls. Because mm -hmm. he is a thrall to the master, yeah. and all these people who are in the morgue are technically thralls to the master. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he remembers his human life, because he says, I remember what it was like to breathe, mm -hmm. we can tell... All these people, like all these people who died on the plane, they're essentially 206 thralls to the master that will remember their life and be able to go back to their life, but still, no matter what, will have to obey anything that is told right. by the master to do. I have to assume that when all these people start returning to their families, it's going to come back on Ephenora in a huge way when people are like, you said these people were dead and yeah. they are right here. You guys don't know anything. Well, we see that a bit in the scenes with him kind uh, of... Well, let's not talk yeah. about let's not talk about the scenes that we saw. Uh, we're going to talk about that after the spoiler I, wall in predictions. I, I think it was very... I think it's, it's interesting hearing your guys' theories on this. When, when I saw the little girl like walk in and like see mm -hmm. her dad and everything, I didn't <coughs> think that... Maybe just because of the, the voiceover that it was like so close to I didn't think that there was like an, a full intelligence there maybe mm -hmm. it's slowly creeping back I saw uh, be, just because he was talking about the love the drive of love I thought it was just like this like natural instinct to return home even if the meaning behind it is missing so maybe it's using it's sort of one of those 
parasite uh, stories where they use the the facts, so all the things that are up in the brain. Yeah. They have access to all the information, but none of the emotion, none of the person is left. The entire show is an analogy for itself. In that every in like every time they're talking about a virus, it it's an analogy for everything that's also going on. Yeah. So the girl is technically a virus going in through a vulnerable part where she can where it can spread. It is technically infecting that area of the life of that person, and then it's going to spread from there. And that's what's very interesting about the show is that girl, the the hunger is satiated by killing the mortician, but. After the hunger is satiated, they still go have to the thirst. love, yeah. and they go back okay. to their home, and now they're hung once they get hungry again, we're going to see it Let's spread. talk about our mortician friend. I want to talk about what he discovers on the bodies, or, or about the bodies, so that we can just confirm what we all believe to be true about uh, about these bodies. Before they rise, okay, the, um, the blood is essentially absent, or it's been just... All the hemoglobin is gone. I, there's no erythmocytes. I don't know what that is uh, to be found on the bodies at all. But um, when when cut open, there is a white substance, kind of uh, opalescent is the word that they use. Krispy Kreme glaze. No. Uh, and every single mm -hmm. one of them has an incision or puncture that hits right into, uh, into I think, the carotid artery. But it's like razor sharp, so there's no bruising. There's no, there's no instrument on earth that could do that. And it's just, it's super clean. Like, it's not like it's, like, heated or anything, because there's no scorch marks. Mm -hmm. It's just perfect. perfect. Right there, yeah, right there. I don't, yeah. I don't have one. Jackie, do you have one? No, 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 no Matt. Zach, no. Don't okay, touch me. we're we're still alive. Yeah. Good. <laughs> All right, good. Um, in any case, uh, that's going to be pretty hard to to ignore when these people start walking around. How do people <laughs> not notice? Hey, you got a hole in your neck, and you don't smoke. You know, that's got to be. It's gotta and be your pretty chest weird. is open, and you didn't yeah. close it. Vampires have regenerative properties, though. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Would that, I right. guess would that heal up? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in any case, he goes to continue to investigate them. He puts them under UV, and we see what looks like, to me, look like just tons of dormant worms yes. under the skin. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that was crazy. Super creepy. And then... Uh, I can't believe, though, when they had him in that room, that he didn't... Because I was like, oh, they're putting him in a closed room. He's a goner. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, he didn't they, die yeah, until he, he got well, out of the room. Also, <laughs> just because it was the key art on all of the billboards and posters... You didn't see one... Yeah. I was waiting for one to go into <laughs> yeah. the eye. But even just the one going under the skin and the hand was Oof. super creepy. Because like my <sighs> one of my biggest fears is parasites and bugs trying to get into your body. Is that stemmed from the mummy? No, it stemmed, <laughs> although that it, that exacerbated it. It was from a horse fly that tried to fly into my ear. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was really, really bad. Do you know, though, that they actually started to take down some of that poster art because so many people complained that it yeah, was so creepy. It was and so I'm like, gross. But they knew what it They looked at it. But yeah. here's my thing. It's, it's like they're When they pulled the girl's eye down, I was like, is it going to come out? And then it didn't. I was like, what? They're, you know, you have, we have so many sexual billboards in Los Angeles mm -hmm. that it, it just is, strikes me as weird that this is the billboard that you wanted to have taken down. Yeah. From all the other ones. That's, well... I didn't I didn't personally find it that frightening or offensive, but, you know, yeah. you can tweet us and let it's us know creepy. how you felt about it. I know it's a lot creepy. of people who hate it. I mean, it. it's creepy, yeah. but it's like the American Horror Story ones are creepy, too. That's true. And the ones for Salem, when that show came yeah. out, were like tons of sticks coming out of people's eyes and mouths. I guess people just don't like worms in their eyeballs. They don't like worms for some Why reason. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Why so is that? So Abraham <laughs> shows up to the airport. Uh, he shows up to the airport, and he just, he kind of like, basically waltzes through security. He, he like old man shuffles through yeah. like it ain't nobody's business. And like a pro, he like kind of like stages that Kumadin so that Sean Astin is like, oh, Mr. Old Man, are you okay? Um, and he's like, I need to speak to whoever's in charge. Now, this scene where, where F basically ignores a guy who knows exactly what's going on <laughs> has like been really exactly has been kind of a point of contention for a lot of critics in terms of whether or not they enjoyed this pilot where they're like this guy th this is a great uh, a well written show or this is a poorly written show because how could this guy ignore someone who so obviously knows what's going on but and i think that the stress of the situation and the fact that you know, he flat out says this is going to sound crazy. 
make F kind of blow him off. We yeah. also know, though, as as sci-fi and fantasy viewers, we know that there's always going to be that element. Every sci-fi and fantasy show has that moment where real world meets sci-fi fantasy world, and the person has that moment of disbelief where you're like, this is weird and it can't be real, you know? And we had to have that. You just have to have that moment. Whether mm-hmm. And F confronting uh, him was that this moment. This is a yeah. Orlando Jones moment, Sleepy Hollow. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I but, also... Uh, um, I just wanted sorry. to say really quickly, because we forgot to mention it when we were talking about our introduction to old guy with the sword, because I can never remember. Abraham. Abraham. Just Abraham. Call him Abraham. Abraham. I'll call him Abraham. Um, where he feeds a heart that is kept in a jar. Yeah. We didn't talk about that. And he's talking to it as if it's an old lover of his. Yeah. Just his foe. May- maybe it's the last master. No, he's talking to it as if it was like his wife. Yeah, that's what I got from it. That really? it was like an old yeah. wife or a like loved one, like a fa- it could even be like a that's father. That's why or he's keeping the heart is because it's Ooh. technically alive. But I wonder it's his if wife. she's the Mina Harker equivalent. Maybe um, she's the Katrina. Yeah, no. yeah, that's Sleepy Hollow. In any case, um, uh, but what I was gonna say, uh, I think that there's also when you're dealing with the CDC. Anytime there's some kind of outbreak like that, you always have some crazy yeah. wandering off the streets hot. like, yeah. I know how to cure the Ebola virus. Yeah. Just let me at it. <laughs> Just let me destroy it's those bodies. Yeah. Well, also, you know. I think they're the, going to take him seriously, though, because he has a badass cane. He has a badass sword, cool sword cane. Yeah. But, like, also think about what F just had to deal with when he was clearly not comfortable giving his little press conference mm-hmm. and yeah. where he got attacked yeah like slapped yes. in the face like l- literally sl- attacked but like yeah. also slapped just like in the face people... by a man wearing 80s glasses yeah i mean <laughs> that hurts. gotta hurt with, holding a picture frame with, like that <laughs> curl for a second but, yeah. i thought he slapped him with the picture frame <laughs> to like rewind <laughs> yeah um but the but so dealing with that mm-hmm. the last thing he wants to do is go out to be like well i know you're missing your loved ones and all that but we gotta burn all their bodies yeah <laughs> And cut off the heads. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make sure you cut off the heads, burn their bodies, because, yeah. yeah. Um, so they get back on the plane, and they're, uh, they're looking around. They find the worms, and they find some soil, and they realize, oh, snap, the soil in this coffin, it's packed with worms. we got to find this coffin, and the coffin's gone. How is it gone? Well, let's find out. We go and we check the videotape. We think that maybe someone messed with it. Not so. Dracula swooped down and lifted it like it was nothing Within in less a than a second. Whoa. Insanity. That shows just how strong it is. And so strong, ass. quick. And I have to imagine that he's still not at full strength even. Mm-hmm. Like he's it? only going to get stronger. Is this like another mummy reference where he yeah. has to absorb people? Well, I mean, not a reference necessarily, okay. but I have to. It's just, it's a trope. Uh, he's yeah, gonna get I think stronger. all vampires, do, like all vampires have that, like the more you feed, the stronger you get. Yeah. yeah, especially like, you know, he's a little tired and cranky. He just got off a super long international <laughs> flight. He he's just ate 206 people. I mean, come on. He's exhausted. He's full. Carb he's coma. Bloated. He's He's <laughs> unbuckling his Dracula belt and letting the <laughs> Under- belly just sit. <laughs> <laughs> Under his uh, Grim Reaper costume. Yeah, you know. <laughs> beating beating in the head. Like, that guy's head was really just, like, him going like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? When he steals that coffin, he's not taking the coffin. He's lifting weights, guys. <laughs> okay? He's going to I the just, Dracula gym. When you say this, I just imagine, like, Dracula with a Woody Allen voice. Like, I, I just don't I don't like airplane food. It's not very good. It's bad for my digestion. I gotta burn off those calories. <laughs> Alright. In any case, he hides himself in That's the back of a like van. That's what he looks like under the cave. He hides himself That's in the back of a himself. van for Gus to find. <laughs> Gus tries to get him out of the airport just as F and Nora figure out what's going on and they try to initiate a lockdown and Jim is on top of it until... Gus passes him this Stoneheart card, and he sees it, and he he undergoes a transformation. He's like, "Let him through! Let him through!" This is one of our vehicles, and he says, "This is the last time. I don't. I'm not doing anything else for them." So I'm kind of wondering, what did he do before? Mm-hmm. What I favor? Mean, like, what? How do you owe the favor of dooming the entire human race? Well, he doesn't know that. That's I, don't I don't think, think he, he knows, knows that that's yeah. what was going on. But I mean, to have a high-ranking CDC official under their thumb, I'm wondering what other viruses or what kind of legislation may have been passed through. There's, it's very, very troubling, and I'm wondering what else he's done for them. I just, at this point, I'm really hoping they don't delve into like 
politics and like vampire politics and bullcrap like that. I mean, I'm like sure vampires. Blood. Yeah. No, I mean it's not gonna be like true blood. Wow. <laughs> but I'm sure like vampires in this situation are gonna have their own politics in the sense that when you rule something, you have some sort of politic, mm -hmm. whether it's like dictatorship. You it's know? gonna be like the alpha from How to Train Your Dragon too. That's, that's yeah. I did not watch that. Good movie. It's a great movie. Good I movie. like the first one. We could argue it's that, but great. It's so great, Toothless Zach. is gonna show up mm, later. In not as gory as this show. Yeah. Oh. Um, so, uh, so basically, Gus gets this coffin back across the river. Um, and the fact that we check in with his mom and his brother and nothing bad happened to any of them makes me think that we're going to be seeing more of them, more of Gus and, and more of his brother who, I, 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 for the life of me, I can't remember his character's name, but it's... It's, it's like crisscross or something. Francis, Car Francis Capra from, from Veronica Mars, so I'm Weevil. happy that he has a Weevil home. Weevil Part 2. <laughs> Weevil Part 2. Um, and do, you think it's, do you think it's weird that... Uh, oh, do you think the guy who was at the airport, remember the guy who got his head smashed? Yeah, yes. like Hulk smash. Do you think that he actually was infected when he reached into the soil or anything like that? Do you think a worm? No, because he would have. He would have felt it. Like it, it's very, very painful and terrifying when it happens. As we see when our um, when our coroner gets one under but his skin. But you don't know hand. if you can feel it or not because he felt it. He was, he was watching. Pain. He was, he it was happen, watching though. it. So he was screaming because it was happening. I think there I has imagine... to be like an incubation period, though, right? Like yeah. yeah. But the reason I the only reason I say this is because. Okay, so we're introduced to four characters who are the survivors. We have Emma, the little girl. We have Barakovich, or whatever his name is. Barowski, who is the... No, what? Who is Bolivar. 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 <laughs> the Bo rocker. Bolivar Borowski, the rocker. Luss. And then uh, we have Miss Luss, who's just an awful, upper-crusty lawyer lady. And then Nerdy Guy. I don't know if we know his name or not. We have the... But, no, and it's... She, I don't think the little girl was counted as the original four survivors. Yeah, we have the she Captain wasn't Redford. one of the survivors. She was one There's of the dead. Oh, Captain that's, Redford you're right, was the you're right. Yeah. But the, the, the nerdy guy who was a survivor... He's got was, such angular ...was features. complaining about ringing in his ear, and do you hear that? Mm -hmm. Do you hear that? Uh, and then the guy starts hearing something. Oh, yeah. And we have that whole, true. like, segment that's where a he's, good like, point. trying to, and he walks But then down. here's a question, right? Why would Dracula destroy his head if, if the head is required for the body to be functional for the virus? Because I don't think Dracula wanted him as a thrall. Hmm. It, and it's Maybe also... he's picky. Uh, yeah, and it's also interesting because um, as he walks down the corridor... It almost as if he's being drawn like a thrall. He is becoming a thrall through the infection, and that's why he's drawn to its master. Interesting. And that's why he doesn't scream or run like hell when he sees this gigantic mound of flesh just on the ground. This heaving. is a very cool idea. I, I yeah. actually, I actually have another idea. It's either that or before maybe he has a certain call to get people to to eat them first. So maybe he wasn't even under, like, he didn't even have the little worms in his body but yet. But the question is, why did he need to kill him? Why? Because he knew about the, he was the only one there, I guess, who knew about the coffin. Yeah. Because, like, why else would he need to kill him? Because literally there is no reason for him to I'm lure gonna this say, random guy away. I'm going to make a ruling right now. I think the odds are 50-50, maybe worse. That, that that the reason why he's killed will actually be gotten into. I think that F and Nora are going to find the body and are going to investigate it now that their coroner buddy is dead. Um, but I don't know necessarily that we'll get into the motivation behind that killing. Uh, it may very well have just been written in because it was cool. Yeah. And just like a, it's sort of and like a, great a loose, cleaning up a loose end. And an, a great introduction to the brutality of Dracula. Yeah. Um, all right, so we go back to Stoneheart. Uh, they're celebrating their victory, essentially. Um, and Can, we have, oh, I also want to say, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but I also want to say throughout this entire thing happening, we see that um, F's wife still does love him. She's watching she's all this attention. on the TV. Yes. yes. I do like, though, how modern is this show, that her TV is her laptop, whereas her, in all and, other it's shows... It's tablet. And her yeah. son's texting yeah. F room. Yeah. I was like, first off, why does this eight-year-old have text messaging on his phone? Because his parents are getting divorced, and one of them bought it to win his love. True. Hashtag grounded. <laughs> but I, I mean, I was just... This is very modern, because the kid's texting, and then the television is your tablet or your computer. Yeah. You know, you don't have in the... Truth. In and, the old vampire right. days, and you would watch it on regular television. What a dick is, like, Matt. He is a dick. That 
at like he's like oh whatever it's probably nothing it's like the kid's dad is like dealing with some math what potentially could be a massive mm-hmm. outbreak and I it's just like think Matt's not very intelligent yeah I mean, he I only agree. works at Sears yeah have, Matt, you, have you gotten customer service at Sears before I mean Matt he's like a manager sucks. at Sears that's how Matt Lieberman feels <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, all right, I want to talk about Stoneheart, and then we got to get into predictions because we got to wrap up. Um, but basically, they're they're toasting their victory, and it seems like their plan, as of right now, is to infect the entire uh, island of Manhattan. Can we agree on that? Yes. Before I, the fall, I will say I do like the f- because this is a very this whole episode is very cinematic, and they have this last this frame image as they're like toasting. They have the male torso and the female torso, and they're both like. Uh, kind of like Roman Greek torsos, mm-hmm. so you feel like they're ushering in a new era. Yeah, because of that image. I, I like love, that. I love the line, and the actor delivered it very well. Where he says, "A sentimental man would take a walk through these streets one last time before the fall." Yeah, loved it. And it just totally shows you his character, where he, and when he says, "Like for the first time in my life, I have everything I want." Mm-hmm. So what is his goal? If he's still human, does is he bringing Dracula over just so Dracula can turn him into one? I don't know. We'll 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 have to find out. We'll have to find out next week. It's also well. Let's get into predictions. Is there I is think, there anything we've missed though? I want to just make sure. Other than talking about Zach texting his, his my father. last thing was just that the music in this episode is awesome. It's one of the Ramen few, Jawadi from uh, from Game of Thrones. It's one of the few times Game of Thrones is another time and Sleepy Hollow are shows that you watch it and you're like, yeah, this music. I can I can get behind this music and it's not just like wait wait background yeah. noise. Um, I apologize if there's any. Anything that you feel that we may have missed, let us know uh, in the comments on YouTube or on iTunes. We gotta get into predictions. I apologize. It's late, people. Matt's and gotta now, work. You're after yeah. Buzz TV. And Marissa's gotta finish work. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> you know, here's another thought, right? Uh, going off of the idea that the master may not be at full strength. What if he's dying? He's been on this planet, I assume, for a very long time. What if uh, Palmer is intended to be? the new master and he is he is being primed like the same way that when um a queen is dying in a beehive or in an anthill they uh feed an uh another ant or another bee a bunch of royal jelly and then it becomes the new queen so it's enti- uh, maybe that's why he's so into this idea and why this is everything that he's ever wanted or maybe he just hates humanity it's entirely possible. Um, we don't we don't quite know yet. So um, for those of you who don't want to be spoiled in any way and consider uh, the next time on or this season on packages that air after episodes to be spoilers, I highly encourage you to stop listening now because now we're going to be talking about all that good stuff in, in addition to all of our predictions. So uh, thank you, and we'll see you next week. Okay, so we see a <laughs> lot of stuff. Um, first of all, Abraham is going to be partnering up with F and Nora, and they're going to be chopping up bodies and yeah. lighting people on fire. I'm so into it. Yeah. 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 I'm so I, I'm so excited that there's an Armenian Jew on television <laughs> as like I'm an, I'm Armenian and Jewish, and it's like I've never even thought that that would be a combination that I would see, especially yeah, not one girl. so badass. Yeah. I think that he Abraham's going to take Ephraim to his little workshop of magic. I agree. Next yes. episode. Uh, and, you know, hopefully Ephraim gets on board and isn't doubting him for, like, half a season. Hopefully it's, like, maybe three episodes tops before we get into vampire hunting goodness. I think uh, my big prediction, I think that that voiceover is going to be is really telling, especially at the end when he says, uh, love is our grace, love is our downfall. Mm-hmm. I think you pro- potentially um, Samwise, I'm sorry, I can't remember. Jim. Jim. His... Um, <laughs> Whatever his motivation was for letting that coffin off the airport mm-hmm. property, it was for a loved one. Yeah. I think that the relationship between F and um, his and, and Nora, his, and not just Nora, but, but his, his wife, but his ex-wife, and Zach is going to lead him to make some ve- some decision that is going to truly doom a lot of people. I like that theory. Any other ones, real quick? <sighs> Uh, this is more an observation than a theory. Um, I just liked from reading the book, you can tell that he wanted to make a series out of it. So it, it's great to see that there's action coming in the next episode because when you read it, you just kind of you can't 
entirely picture that, but when someone who knows about stunts and coordinating and making those things look real, real good, that is what you're waiting for as a book reader. You're like, yeah, I'm just waiting for that master fight scene. I, there's a great series I read that's like teen novels called The Power of Five by Anthony Horowitz. And kind of towards the end of the fourth or fifth books, you have a society, basically, this giant city that is slowly being taken over by demons as they, but the, the normal people don't really realize it as stuff is getting really bad. They just don't really realize it, but there are demons slowly in, inter, uh, what's it called? Um, Intermingling? Inserting themselves oh. in okay. these different positions of power. Infiltrating. So I feel like that's kind of what's going to go on with, with the vampires in this, that we're going to have more and more people under this we master also infiltrating have to different assume aspects of society. That there are more vampires out there. Oh, yeah. 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 I actually feel the opposite of Stephen on this one, just based on the, uh, like the line about walking through the streets. I think that this very quickly is going to turn to chaos. Not immediately, well, yeah. but very soon. But I'm talking about that's, that's where we're at, though. Is that oh, they've been doing? There. They've been doing. They've been doing what I was just saying for so long that they've set up the infrastructure of this city to fall overnight, and mm -hmm. we're just going to see so much crap get real. I feel like Berlin is already taken. Yes, yeah, so they've set up. Maybe they've set up like the laws in a way that like sort of like hold back the CDC so that they can't really take action or like prevent anyone from getting onto the island of Manhattan if they have to quarantine it in a way that would well, help we the Well, we also we oh. have we have Everett who uh, is this guy who F is at odds with and it looks like in the next episode he's going to take control of the situation away from F. Oh, and that was my prediction earlier I didn't mention cuz we moved on but uh Everett is going to take control over the operation because all these people are going to be returning to their families and he's going to remove him from the case Great. for the fam because of that because he's making a fool of everyone here which okay. would force F to then seek out Abraham and go to his workshop of like magic go around uh, go magic around magic. that door <laughs> all right uh, folks unfortunately we do need to wrap up i want to thank you so much for listening to our very first episode of the strain podcast Woo! we will be taping i know we taped it a little late this week i apologize but we will be taping regularly on sunday nights and it'll be available for you on on Monday mornings. What, what time are we going to be streaming at on Sundays? Is 9, 9, 9 o'clock? 9 p.m.? All right, so 9 p.m. Pacific time on Sunday nights. You can watch us live on AfterBuzzTV.com, and you can live tweet us your questions. Please, please do. Uh, <coughs> Stephen Lemieux, where can the people find you? You guys can find me doing the MasterChef <coughs> After Show here Mondays at 9 p.m. PST, and as well as on Twitter, at Stephen Lemieux, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-L-E-M-I-E-U-X. Totally watch the YouTube and totally leave us ratings on iTunes. We got to get 50 by episode 6 on iTunes. Let's do it. That's the thing. Jackie we'll Borowski. shut you out. We'll shut you out. Jackie Borowski. At 123Jackie underscore B on Twitter. At 123JackieB, all one word on Instagram. Jackie is spelled J-A-C-Q-U-E, not the normal way. Um, and I'm also doing the Under the Dome after show with Matt Lieberman. That's true. Zach Wilson. Oh, you guys can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at that Zach Wilson, T-H-A-T-Z-A-C-H-W-I-L-S-O-N. And also here at After Buzz on, uh, I'm doing Dominion right now, and The Leftovers and MasterChef with Mr. Woo! Lemieux over here. Yes, and you can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman. That's M-A-T-T-L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. You can find all my videos for SourceFed and SourceFed Nerd on YouTube. I'm doing a bunch of After Buzz shows. I'm not going to list them all here now because everyone had to list there. But this one's the best. This one is the best. I'll see you all next week. Good night. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire After Buzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the After Buzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After Shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Bye, Bye you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.